you can idolize a good thing. Wow. The good things in your life actually all need to be submitted to God. A lot of people start businesses thinking that they're going to win something when they don't even know that starting the business is actually a character development program. Ooh. As soon as you start a business, it's you end up realizing, shoot, like it's me. Like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, the reason why that didn't, that didn't work is actually because of you. Getting ready to leave and the last thing I said before I left was the only other church I would ever work at is Transformation Church. Months later, lo and behold, they called me. Hey man, what are you doing? Traveling the world, taking pictures, making content. They're like, do you want to do that in Oklahoma? 60,000 people watching for Easter. Like, Jeez. wait, we're making content that like millions of people are watching. Like, so like when you see a number, like that's a person for real. Yeah, yeah. Hardest week of my life. Wow. wow. The This is, I could cry right now. Faith Hustle Podcast, where we help young Christian entrepreneurs learn how to build their business and careers God's way. I'm your host, McQuenda. I've been an entrepreneur for almost 10 years. And in that time, I've had the joy to be mentored by successful entrepreneurs who um, not only uh, succeeded in their business careers, but they had a great devotion to Christ and love for their families and had a really healthy um, holistic uh, nature about them when it comes to success. And that's what we're trying to uh, strive for here at Faith Hustle. We, talk, we teach on five pillars, um, which is stewardship, integrity, humility, being spirit-led, and generosity. And those are things that um, are true to you, things that you're wanting to pursue. We encourage you, tap in with us, subscribe to uh, the audio podcast wherever you listen to in the YouTube channel. Uh, we're going to continue to just grow together and build in our faith house. And on today's episode, I got my boy, my man, Ron. What it do, baby? What it do, What it do? do? Come you on, now. You see it? Come on. Toss the a joy on. Oh. Hey, hey. Just had to take a little step of faith. <laughs> come on now. Hey, man. I love it. Yeah, just come across the pond. It, I mean, it literally, well, you kind of throw the land. Rock. You yeah. could. I actually, it is literally a hop, skip, and a, a drive. Yeah. I, and my car kind <laughs> of drives drive. itself. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. a very easy it is. drive between here and Tulsa. It is. Yeah. Yeah. North, yeah. North Texas and Tulsa. I didn't realize how close it was. Yeah. But just a couple hours. Just a couple hours. Yeah. But dude, it's an honor to have you here, man. It's an honor to be here. Um, it's an honor to, to see what you're doing, what God is doing through you, and to learn more about you and not just learn it by, by like, like seeing what you do but yeah. seeing you in yeah. real life yeah so it's an honor man Dude, it's been cool we we chopped it up at shoreline uh, i think a few weeks ago and yeah then, and then you know met through mutual friends and yeah yeah i've been following your stuff for a minute man and um it's you know again same thing of it's not just the there's a lot of people who make cool stuff but mm -hmm. there's there's the heart there's the spirit of a person you're like nah i I resonate with that person. There's something there. That's there's real. Kindredness. And that's so, so real. Um, and that's why we bring. I don't. I don't just bring people on just because they make money. Like that's not the point, you know. Yeah. And so, or or people who are making moves. Like yeah. It's it's those who have that foundation. That, yeah. That we're looking there's, for. There's there's that's one half. It's the making money, making moves. But the first portion of that is faith. And I think in every piece of content that I've made, probably in the last couple of years, I'm trying to explain my faith to people mm. in a practical way. Where someone that looks like me, that someone that looks like you, yeah. someone that looks like you can say, I could do that. Right. Yeah, you can. Right. You can read your Bible and it's normal. Yeah. You can love God and it's it it may be countercultural, but you know it's right for your spirit. Mm. And um, but then also there's parts of who I am that's imparted into the content that I make. Yeah. Uh actually my pastor said this a long time ago. He said, uh, the Bible is inspired. By pe like by the Holy Spirit, yeah, right. That's really what it is. Like it, it's all it is is in spirit. The mm. spirit you put in it is the spirit you get out of it. Mm. And the joy that's on my life, the love that's in my life, the mm. grace that's on my life, the every whatever is in it on my mm. life. If I put that into my content, mm. it will be expressed, even if the content's bad. Yeah, because that's why God transcends things. Yeah, because it's this what is it's inspired in yeah. spirit is the spirit that will be received. So once I kind of once that clicked in my life, I just was like, I need to capture mm. the spirit on me and give it to those that might be watching or, or who really needs it. Mm. So and that's where you make I don't even know where this was going, but like that's where you make YouTube, content that resonates. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So like right now I'm I'm like going through some stuff. 
But the fact of the matter is the algorithm is reading me yeah, and it's giving me content that resonates with my spirit. Mm. Why? Because there are people that, that are going through what I'm going through or have gone through what I'm going through mm. and so on and so forth. So, I mean, yeah, man, it's, it's uh, once that clicked for me, yeah. I just was like, oh, I mean, what is an image? I could go on. I really can't. Oh, I, no, I no, could no, you, you came out the gate swinging. I, I said, could literally right, go now. on. What is an image? An image yeah. is is I'm capturing what what you are, what this is, mm. and it's 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 a it's a type and shadow of a replica. It's a type and shadow of really like we what we are to God. Yeah, 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 yeah. We are images of God, not idols, right? So whole, again, on, whole other conversation. Yeah. We are images of God, yeah. and because He breathed into us, we get to breathe life in like now i'm not like breathe life on other people <laughs> but like what is within me now actually can be given mm. because i've got it from god yeah and i would never understand it if i did not know who i was within christ mm. so um it's the same thing it's just all it's it's my content is an image of me hopefully to give into you to mm. invest or i'm so sorry the better word is impart to sow seeds into another person mm. so oh. yeah Man, we just off the record, Jason. My gosh, <laughs> man, bro, like for real. <laughs> Breaks, just, dude. I can't tell you, man. He was, I can't, he was like this a is, horse with the, you know, when they let it off. This has been like, the hardest week of my life. Wow. wow. The this is I could cry right now. Man. This has been the hardest week of my life. So I've just I've had to press in, man. Wow. And uh, there's a lot. There's a lot I coming out of me, so yeah. I'm ready. I'm excited. No, no, I I love it, and, and yeah. like I said, I I honor I honor you, bro, and um, I know it's gonna be healing for a lot of people. You know? I believe it. There's just, there's so many things that um, we think that people get ministered to from the best of us, but it's actually from the the pain, you know, and um, that's I needed yeah, that. Yeah, no, for yeah. real. And it's like I was talking to a friend of mine. She was actually on the podcast. <clears throat> well. When you see this, it's not last week, but last week when we filmed this, yeah. uh, a friend of mine, Samantha, and I was encouraging her to get, you know, get vulnerable. She was like, I'm, I'm not really a vulnerable person. I'm trying to work on that. And I'm like, like, you think that people get impacted by your highlight moments, the moments of your triumph. But it's like, no, that's like, show me anywhere in scripture where we, we learn more from the mistakes. You know, we learn more from... You know, Abraham, where he doubted God, but then later in his life, he comes to himself and and grows. And as soon as God says, sacrifice your son, he's like the next morning. Right. You don't get that. That that is not as significant if you don't see that when he lies about his wife. Abraham is not the father of faith without his mistakes. Mm. Like the. It's it's counter it's obviously countercultural mm. and it just sounds backwards, but everything about the kingdom is backwards. Yes. We don't see Abraham it, as the father of faith yeah. one until after he dies. Yeah. It's not a name that he gets until after his death. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, it's his mistakes that make him because it's it's he's not he's not um he's not uh like known from his mistakes. Yeah, he's yeah. known from what he did out of his mistakes. Yeah. And now we can say Long after, right. when the promise is kept, right. it's the father of faith. Same thing goes for Moses. Yeah. Like, Moses made mis- did great things. Yeah. But he's also really known also for his mistakes. Yeah. And because of his mistakes, he didn't get to walk into the promised land. Yeah. And I'm reading this right now in, in Hebrews. I'm really stuck in Hebrews. I've read Hebrews maybe like two, three times in the oh, last oh, couple yeah. days. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, it's, it was disobedience. Mm. disobedience stopped them from entering into the rest yeah. that God had for them. But at the end of the day, like it's, it still marked them. And at the end of Moses's life, God was actually able to call him friend and personally buried, buried Moses. That is the coolest thing in the world. It sucks that he did not go into the promised land. Yeah. It's good that his, his descendants, the next generation yeah. got to, and he got to see that, but he didn't get to go. Exodus into 33 it. might be, I know we're going a little tangent, but just stay with us. This hey, is good. This is yeah. good. Exodus 33 might be my favorite passage of all time. Really? Of of when he says, like, if you're not, if you're not going, I'm not going. Mm. I, I, I genuinely don't think most of us would be like, no, like, if it's my dreams and you're not there, I'll, I'm still going. Yeah. But to have the posture of like, no, even if I got everything I want, but you're not there, that's not where I want to go. That's good. And, and it's like, because it's like, what, what, what's the, what's the idol? You know, like it is is my dream an idol? Yeah. Is my platform an idol? Is yeah. my whatever my idol? Or if he said, 
I, I want you to lay it all down. Would yeah. you be willing to? That's yeah. it right there. I think like that's the season I'm in. Truthfully, mm. truth be told, I'm literally dealing with that right there. Wow. And uh, you can idolize a good thing. Wow. The good things in your life actually all need to be submitted to God. Man. Money, uh, the thing, the the your desires. Yeah. Dude, if you want to be a pastor, if you want to be in ministry, that's a good thing. It's a good thing. But is a is it a God thing for you to actually do? Yes. Like yeah. the 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 person that you're dating, like it could be a good thing. You could never argue. Mm-hmm. It is a is it a God it's thing? A God thing. Uh, it, this counts for everything. Yes. If you cannot submit that on the altar of God. Mm. If you can't look at that thing and say, I will give you up for God, it's an idol. And we've got to remember that yeah. thing because it, are you willing to sacrifice your birthright for a bowl? Bro, like, bro, that Esau story is wild. That's how we treat Jesus. Yes. That's how we, I will, I want comfort. I'm tired of waiting. And it's just, it's more convenient for me to take this bowl. He literally says, what is this? What is this bowl worth it to me? What what is this birthright worth it to me? I'm just gonna eat, and oh man, we can oh man, we can. That's we why can, we need to fast. But that's no, again another no, story. No, hundred percent. But I yeah. think this has to do a lot with with business in a, in a lot of different oh, ways. Oh, for because, sure. Or or just whatever you you want to pursue, because the first person you pursue is Jesus, not yes. your dreams. Oh my goodness. Because because again, I faith hustle. And I, I say this, I feel like a broken record, but um, it's it's for a purpose. I did it with one H, not two, specifically for a reason because faith and hustle are not two separate things. Okay. And if you try to segment the, segment them, you're gonna it you're gonna have holes. And it's like no, like I am a minister before the Lord. Yep. Period. Through and through. I just happen to do video for business. Yeah. I just happen, it's out of my overflow of that. But if I say like, all right, I'm gonna take my 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 church hat or my Christian hat off on Mondays, I'll put it back on on the right. weekends. It's like no, like that's it, compartmental. That's a compartmentalization. There's actually something in our community, in the black community, it's called what is that word? Where you like code switching? Mm. It's it's a form of code switching. Code switching is good yeah but it's also a form of i like it could feel like manipulation yeah you're not being your true authentic self Mm -hmm. to um to these different audiences when in all reality you need to be the same person in the room and out of the room yeah in their face and out of their face that's what integrity is that's the second and that's the second pillar of faith hustle and it's like i think a lot of people start businesses thinking that they're going to win something when they don't even know that starting the business is actually a character development program. Ooh. As soon as you start a business, it's you end up realizing, shoot, like it's me. Like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah, the reason why that didn't, that didn't work is actually because of you. The oh, reason why that 100%. client didn't work out is, is there's a character flaw within you. You were not congruent with what you said or you did not follow through on what it was. Or yes. You couldn't like be dedicated or uh, d- mm-hmm. disciplined enough to be able yeah. to do the X, Y, Z. And it's like, hey, everything in my business for the last probably, what, six years has been a wake up call. Mm. And I actually here's another thing that I'm learning something as a businessman in faith. I've got to know actually how to pivot. This is actually really important. I learned this recently that I do this really well. My gift is faith. Yeah, yeah. So it's hard for me to look at something and be like, this is bad, and then dwell in it. Mm. It's hard. Not because like I don't like bad things. Mm-hmm. It's actually because the gift within me is to see the good and move on that. Yeah, yeah. And if I was if I dwelled in all the times I failed, mm. we would have never seen me succeed in anything. Wow. And I'm like, I've got to, I also, I have to see it, right? And I've got to recognize it. I've got to change it within myself and have the ability to say, I'm going to pivot. Because if I do this again, I'm actually considered a fool. Wow. Because if I do, if I if a dog runs to his vomit again, he's that's foolish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got to pivot and move correctly. Yeah, and I've got to make the adjustments. And here's a great a thing for a good leader: I've got to make the adjustments now on the go. Wow. I've got to make, and and that's like it's just it's, but all that comes with practice. Yeah. Like so, and and if money is your only metric for success, you'll. It's not even just like, oh, you'll lose. It's just like you're miss out on all that God wants to do. He wants to develop you beyond just how much revenue you make. And we don't always see his big picture because I, I remember when I first started my business, 
the Lord told me specifically, he was like, like, look at it from not a standpoint of how much you can make, mm-hmm. but who is the person you're becoming in your 20s that's going to set up your 30s? Yes, your 40s, uh, your, your 50s. And, and it's like, if you can just focus on that, the money's going to come. Like, like, let me, like, and honestly, like, even if you're in a business right now and you're able to pay your bills, you won. That's so true. Because the amount of businesses, I, I, my mentor reminded me of this. He has like a $30 million agency. Mm-hmm. He was like, listen, if you can pay your bills, literally, statistic, how do I say that? Statistically. Statistically, praise the Lord. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> You've won. Like literally across the board, the amount of businesses that don't get the year, year three, year five, or it sustains them enough. Like, you're winning more than you think. But That's beyond so that, it's like what he's doing in you, um, if you have enough foresight to see it, it's like it's it's a whole God God's God God's playing chess. We playing checkers. Yeah. And just, you know, man, we Dude. got oh we we okay. Yeah, let's actually get into uh, it. My fault. So, OG. No, 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 no. My I fault. Love, my I, fault. Look, my fault. Don't, no, don't you apologize, bro. We this that's what the Holy Spirit wanted to do. That's that's why I love this format. Give a little bit of context now. Yeah, just yeah. just I, I know you've told your story in like bajillion podcasts, but for those who might not know who you yeah, are, man. just a l- little bit of background and then we'll, we'll we'll jump into some other stuff. Um I don't I hate talking about myself. I, I in know, this I way. know. I hate it too. I hate um, it too. But yeah, man, I am a creative from New York City who did not know that I could make it out the hood. Come on now. Um and I stumbled uh my way to Las Vegas. I got saved. And I was a kids pastor actually for a long time. And then I picked up a camera. Someone prayed over me. And he was like, this is going to change your life. It's going to wow. put you in spaces and places you never thought that you could be. You're going you're gonna to grow financially. It's going to give you influence. You're going to have a hand uh, to be able to help creatives around the country. Whatever. Wow. Like I can't even remember all that he said, but I know it was impactful. It was a prophetic word. It, yeah. was, it was the prophetic word. Wow. The next month, Shake Shack called me for a, a commercial. I've never made a video in my life. Dang. Shake Shack calls me for a commercial. Still baffled by that. Um, I just had Shake Shack last it's, week. It's, hey, it's so good. And then I started doing social media at that church, and it started to do really well. Um, shout out to people like um, what is that brother's name? Uh, Jesse Driftwood. Jesse Driftwood is one of my greatest inspirations mm. uh, since I started uh, social media. Yeah. And then uh, the church started to pick up on what that looked like, and then um, I realized I had to do it more outside of the house than I could inside of the house. Mm. So I kind of just took a chance on myself. Wow. I left my job. And then what I, I remember packing up my office, getting ready to leave. And the last thing I said before I left was the only other church I would ever work at is Transformation Church. And I was like, yeah, all right. You know, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mind you, I mean, I did know the staff. Like I had some friends gotcha, there. Yeah, yeah. So six months later, lo and behold, they called me. Hey, man, what are you doing? Uh, You know, like ch- kind of chilling. I'm traveling the world, taking pictures, making content. They're like, do you want to do that in Oklahoma? No, I don't. I didn't know y'all were out there. <laughs> My bad. Like I, I thought, have, I thought y'all were in 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 New California, York or somewhere Cali. fun, you know, like yeah. somewhere nice. Give me Miami. Lo and behold, I absolutely love Tulsa with all my heart. Come on now, um, Tulsa. It, it took me leaving to really understand that, but um, yeah. So that happens. I got a job offer. I deny it. A year later, I take it, and then um, I'm at TC. COVID kind of starts. Yeah. Shortly after that, and we. We just, our hands are to the plow. Wow. And while I was working with my head down, I didn't know what was being built in me. I didn't know what I was building. I, I, I just knew I was being obedient. Yeah, yeah. When I look up, I was like, well, there's 60,000 people watching for Easter. Like, Jeez. wait, we're making content that like millions of people are watching. Like, so like when you see a number, like that's a person for real. Yeah, yeah. And before I knew it, like some of the, the ideas that I had and some of the, the ideas that our team had, not just me. Yeah, yeah. I just got to be a part of something really incredible. I love that. And um, like, I'm grateful that my ideas were listened to. Um, so I got to be a part of that and I got to help other churches along the way. Like I, love that. I got to have conversations like this. Yeah. I got to be a part of podcasts. I got to go to conferences and help other churches and help creative teams, help other individuals go from like, oh, I kind of want to post every day to finding a passion in it and wow. a career launching out of it. Then that. when I realized there was a system and a strategy to, uh, like really being able to make content, but then also there's a spirit to it as well. Yeah. That's a whole nother thing. Yeah. But, um, but yeah. And, um, now I literally get to travel the country yeah, and I get to help churches. I get to consult people 
I get to preach. Um, I get to I get to help young people. I love that. Um, and I get to make content that helps the Christian move forward in their faith. I love that, dude. So inspiring and phenomenal job, by the way, of giving your story. It takes me like 10, 10 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, you I didn't. Did. I didn't want to do no, too no, much there. No, no, I I love it. I love it, man. I I think one one thing that stands out, and obviously we're gonna get into some some other questions, but that stands out to me is just like how many things get, you know. I'm a planner by nature. Mm-hmm. I'm strategic. I love. I'm not. Uh, <laughs> just throwing it out there. But yeah, like that. That's that's kind of my wiring, right? I can make a five year plan like that. I could see the five year plan. <laughs> Only look at the last line and then meet you in five years. But what I love about your story is that it, even mine, uh, any, any of my plans that I wrote down was like, psh, God was like, ha, you're funny. Yeah. And it's like, no, everything I have seen in my life has been just saying yes. Just whatever door he opened. Dude. Like, All right. This, and it's, that's cause, so real. Because I think sometimes we're like, we, we want a, somebody will hear your story. It's like, All right. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna find a big church. I'm gonna hit them up. I'm gonna be like, hey, I got you on content, and like, you know, and 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 it's like, no, 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 no. Like that's not the point. The point is, God can write a better story than you could ever write. My story is whack in comparison to someone else's story. Yeah. My story pales in comparison to your story. Watching or listening, my story is actually only made for me. It has my handprint and God's hand on it. Mm. But like, if you try to do my handprint and put God's hand on it, one. You're not going to get accepted. The the, the phone's not going <laughs> to unlock. Yeah, 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 yeah. And God's not going to put his hand on something that wasn't really for you in the first place. Yes. And I think a lot of we find a lot of people in our generation that say, I'm going to do it like this person did. Mm. I'm going to do it like Mr. Beast did. Mm. First of all, that is not your anointing. No. I think we've got to understand this it. on a spiritual level. That's not your mantle. No. And if you try to steal someone's mantle, it's not going to it's not it's no longer anointed. Mm. And I'm just like, I got to make sure that I'm doing what I'm created to do. I got to make sure that I'm doing what I, I, what's obedient to God for me. Yeah. Because what's obedient to God for me, will I will beget the results that God actually has for me. Because imagine you actually winning. Imagine you getting everything you wanted because it was someone else's thing. And you get there and you realize you never wanted any of it. Wow. That's gross. Yeah. So we've got to actually do the self-work and the, the digging and the, 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 the deep like conversation with God mm-hmm. for ourselves to say, hey, God, what is it actually that I'm made for? And then you got to like take take inventory. A lot of people don't do this. A yes. lot of people look at other people's lives and say, "I want to do that." Well, let's actually ask. Yes. Take, what What is your past? What is your history? What have you been through? Actually, say in comparison to that. Yes. Okay. Great. You. You. Good. Yeah. Next one. Ask your parents. Mm. You. We neglect. Actually, it's a very Western cultural way of thinking. Um, we neglect that our parents prayed for us. We neglect that yeah. our parents actually, when you were born, your mother saw you, your father saw you. Mm-hmm. He probably prayed for you. He probably got oh, a word I have from a crazy story about it, that. Actually. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And he probably got a word from the Lord and spoke it over you. Mm-hmm. Well, let's just say three, three to six months while you're in the womb. Mm-hmm. And then up until you were probably yesterday. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. So um, there's, there's significance in what God actually showed your parents. There's, there's significance in what you what God gave our parents, because yeah. some of the things that they're supposed to accomplish is through us. Mm. And, um, but there's, there's obviously a toxic way of that happening, but yeah. Yeah. And, and of course everyone comes from different family backgrounds, but I think the, the, no matter what it was, God specifically made you for an assignment with a purpose, with giftings that are unique to you. Yes. Not to anybody else. I, I'll tell the, the, the birth story. Uh, uh, two seconds. Go for my it. Dad, my dad's a G. Love him. I believe you, it. Ugandan, I can feel it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's he is so, like, low-key about it. Yeah. Like, does not have any social media at all. Yeah. Could care less about it, but he's out here in these streets winning souls. Wow. And when I was born... He told the doctors, true story. I was born in Holy Spirit Hospital in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I, bro, that's like, not you, like, fair. You, literally, holy, and he literally, he literally told the nurses, "You're allowed to deliver my son, but no one's allowed to talk." That's my rule. The first words I want him to hear are mine. Wow. And then he prayed Deuteronomy over me. Wow. And then he literally had prophets come into my room, and literally they're like, they gave me a globe, like you're gonna travel the world. And be a voice to the nations. Oh yeah, that's what my name, McQuenda, means. The sent one or apostle. Oh, I'm stealing that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, I, when I have kids, 
Shut up. <laughs> no Nobody one talking. Talk. Nobody talking. Everybody silent. Silence. The and first we word. On, we put on Bethel. We you know in how, that room. Stir. But like, but like, Adam was made, and the first voice he heard Woo! was his father's. Bro, the and the first thing he did. Yes. Was rest. Goodness gracious. Man, you, you, Goodness you gracious. You're the program. Man, Yo, I want to. I I like pray about my family every day. Yeah. And like well, how I'm gonna do it. I have condoli family values already written out. Yeah. I need to actually write them out. Thank you for reminding yes, me sir. of that conviction. But like I remember watching a video on Instagram where this guy, his his daughter had a child and he was there and he he blessed the child. And I was like, I wanna be like that. Yeah. Like I wanna be able to and I just never thought of it because I've never been in that experience before. Right, right. I've never seen anyone be born. Yeah, like yeah. I wasn't there. Yeah, like, yeah. But to see that and to hear that story now gives me direction to say yeah. now i know what to do because i want to actually live that out yeah that's really beautiful it's awesome it's aw- but yeah i um i mean and, and not to be a, a cheesy segue but honestly like even faith hustle or whatever thing that god's put in your hand you should treat it with that as much intentionality yeah like bless it for, like there are certain, of course, we want God's blessing. We want God's hand over it. I, I'll tell this this quick story, and then, and then we'll, we'll we'll transition to some more questions. Uh, my uh, uh, a man that I've looked up to for years, his name's Dominic Russo. Um, he told a story once when he had his firstborn son. He was just you know rocking him in the, you know in the rocking chair, and he was just praying over him. He's got he said, God bless my son, bless my son, bless my son. And the Lord spoke to him and said, Dominic, no, you, you. bless him. He said, I gave you authority. I gave, I put him in your care. No, you speak blessing. I was like. You know that, you know the mic time. Whoa. <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> That's a whoa moment. Yeah, yeah, Bro, but it's like, there's so many things where, again, the Lord's favor, we want it. And part of it comes with requirements. We, we want the blessing of God in our lives. Yeah. But, and I believe this, and I know there's, there's, you know, denomination, denominationally, there can be a little mix up of the sovereignty of God and what's our placement. I, I can't look in scripture and not see that there, God has given his people authority. For sure. And, and, and what you say and, and you partnering with the Lord, like there's certain things was like, he's just waiting for you to like. God actually can't do it. anything outside of the, like the hands of a human like yes whatever you bind what, on earth will be bound in heaven literally loose. god is you we can't touch god yeah so if god tells you to do something you are actually the the physical handiwork of the lord and if you are not obedient you're literally stop like doing your best to stop god's plan man so when he says for you to do something it's n- almost never for you wow my life is not for me my my future spouse is not for me like I'm reading this book, bro. A marriage has nothing to do with you and the person. It has everything to do with the mantle and the promise and the the problem on earth that your marriage was supposed to solve. And I'm just Oof. like, oh, I keep thinking that this is about me. Wow. How selfish. And, and that, it's it's yeah. actually a beautiful thought. It's a beautiful thought. That's powerful. I know we've talked about a lot of different things yeah i i i, I want to hear about your transition from because i know we could go into your knowledge and social media and insights and all yeah, yeah, stuff. yeah i think that'd be fun honestly what i'm what i'd love to hear more is the leap that you took yeah um from being at tc transformation going off really kind of on your own consulting and yeah and and, and kind of this where, where you're at now Mm-hmm. One, I love to hear the, a bit of the story of it, but two, I love to hear what's been like the challenges, the um, the things that you 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 now have discovered that maybe you didn't know. Because there there might be people here that you know you have a skill set, a built skill skill set, and it could be used for something like consulting. I'd love to just hear your 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 journey in that. Of course, I want to start off by saying transitions really hard. Yes, transition is something millennials. And a lot of my friends that are Gen Z have not done well. No. I don't know too many people that can just transition and come back. Mm. Like, that is a very real thing. Yesterday or two days ago, I went to Transformation Church. 
And it wasn't like I, I didn't feel out of place. There was wow. no like, I'm super grateful. Now, do I know the inner workings and details to say, like, can I work for you again? No, but I, that's yeah. not my goal. Yeah, my yeah, goal yeah. isn't to come, come back and be like, hey, my goal is to be able to come back home. Yeah. And that's really the 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 thing that I think people need to understand, being a son of a house, mm. being able to come back home. That's Pro- so like, good. you know what I'm saying? That's so good. So uh, there's that. Transition is hard, and you have to listen to the Lord. Yes. I believe God was like, hey, man, I need you to break. And like, not that this is bad. Yeah. Not that something happened, because nothing happened. Yeah. I just needed to 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 take a step. And God's like, I need you to to actually go and try this for mm. your own. Because there's some things I need to teach you in the wilderness. And that's really what I'm learning right wow. now. Um, it's been really hard. I actually, like, to be honest with you, I don't like Dallas at all. Like Dallas is super cool. Shout out to my friends that live here. But it, I, I realized I'm I like I don't feel called to this this place. Mm. Like there's no like I have a mission and a mantle mm-hmm. for Dallas. Mm-hmm. It's just I came to learn. Mm. Um, and really, I believe the definition of that is the wilderness. Mm. And um, the, the, I've I'm learning the difference between going into hiding and being hidden. I think. Ooh. And right now I'm being hidden. And like, obviously I get to do things like this. And I'm super grateful. Mm. Um, but I think there's there's a secret like chamber that I'm trying to like lock into with God. Yeah. And to just be in on my face mm. and to to create actually really what I'm trying to do is dig a well. Mm. I don't know if you you ever watched Naruto? No. Oh okay. I'm sorry. Is that anime? Yeah, it's anime. Oh I'm, so I, I grew Jason up watching was anime. I, I, you know I, I grew up watching anime. I haven't watched it in a long time. Yeah, yeah. But it's a really big fundamental part of my life. Yeah. yeah. Um the one of the best things I've ever seen was this guy named Naruto who wanted to be Hokage, and he wanted to stop at nothing to be able to do it. Mm. Um, and by stop at nothing did not mean like um, like put people down. It actually meant him becoming friends with everyone. It meant mm. him loving people. It meant him discipling people and so on and so forth. I learned a lot about pastoring from a TV show that I watched in sixth grade, wow. more than really that I've learned from other people. <laughs> but that's a whole other story. Yeah, yeah. But I'm going to get into the digging part. Yeah, yeah. There's a character that everybody hated in the show. Mm. Her name is Sakura, right? Sakura is in every fight and does absolutely nothing. Mm. I never want to be that person. I don't want to be in any room. I don't want to be in any space and do nothing. Mm. There was a moment where she realized she sucked, and she met a mentor, and her mentor said, you're not allowed to do anything. She goes, I'm so sorry. I learned how to fight better. She goes, mm. you need to dig a well. Wow. And it was the 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 premise for all their power is they hold this thing called chakra. So, like, let's just say it's water. Yeah, yeah. They hold this water within themselves, and they utilize this water to actually do whatever they're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, what she was doing was digging a well to get a bigger container yeah, for yeah. the chakra that she had. Mm. She did that for years. By the time she realized she had this entire container for the chakra that she was holding wow. to actually be 10 times more powerful than anyone she had met. Wow. So it like, and it gave her the control to be able to utilize it in, in uh, poignant ways. Yeah. So it became, she refined it mm. and kind of like water pressure. Um, it, it when water pressure goes up, it actually can hurt you. So that's yeah, yeah. that's really like yeah. the entire thing. So I actually have found in my move that I'm supposed to dig a well mm. because what I have to give to other people needs to come from a deep reserve and that's I good. and it could never be empty. Wow. So now I'm in a space where it's like, all right, keep digging, keep eating, keep reading, mm. keep learning, keep keep growing. Yeah. Um, because the deposits that I'm gonna have to make into the people that I'm called to yeah. is bigger than I thought. Mm. so um that's yeah that's really good yeah like sometimes like we're like god why aren't you using me more it's like well there's nothing there to pull from you don't have anything in there there's nothing there like and it's like i i i kid you not i was literally reading on the way here um matthew 6 Mm -hmm. where it says i mean it says it multiple times um but verse six, but when you pray, go into your room, shut the door, pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. Mm. And I, I was like meditating on it before I got here. I was like, man, like um, the rewards I want publicly, it's like you actually reward the things that nobody sees. Yes. And it's like, it's just willing to be hidden. I want that more than I want what I would become. Mm. I want God more than I want what I will become. Mm. I'm almost at a point 
and this is so hard. Like it's been hard for me to get here because it's yeah. it's heartbreaking. Yeah, yeah, I almost don't care about like oh, I want to be a pastor. I can't care about that anymore. Mm. Like I've said it for so long. I like I've said I want to impact creators for so long, but I'm at a place where I don't want that mm. more than I want God. Wow. I want to be able to like to know the Lord at a deep level at a at a uh, lordship, yeah. savior, friend, father, yeah. keeper, like a s- sustainer, yeah. like at a deep level so that if anybody pulls on me, yeah. one, I can say who touched me, yes. but then also I can say, how can I pour into you? Wow. Man, I, I think that's so, that's so good. I, I think we, we have to, and it's not saying, oh, this generation needs this because they don't have it. I think, I think, I think there's seeds of it that are there. I believe so. Um, I, I really do. But I, I are see they cultivated? It. Yes. And I think, I, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the story. I think you like it. Again, my dad. Um, Shout out to I, your dad. A lot of these stories are my dad's. Hey, man. Um, but when I first like got set on fire for the Lord, like I'm talking like, I'm like, you know, it's about 13 and I go to my dad and I'm thinking he's going to be excited, right? Like this is your, the biggest joy of your life as a pastor's kid. Your son is like going full into the things of God. And I tell him, he's like, McCoy, I'm so happy for you. I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled. He said, you know, what I'm going to be more excited for when you're 50. Mm. And you're more in love with Jesus than you are now. Mm. And at first I was like, well, dang, man, like <laughs> kind of ran into my parade. Like, I know, I'm like, huh? like I, you know, I gave you this news. Like, yeah, that's cool. Give me 30 years. Your dad's from where? Uganda, East Africa. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And, and but what, as I've gotten older, I can count on my hand. That same youth group that I was a part of that literally like a revival broke out. I can count on my hand the amount of people who are still following the Lord in the same breath. Yes. And it was like, oh, he was trying to build in longevity to me. Like, no, 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 keep going deep. Keep building. Like, it's not about, like, it's about, it's, it's, I remember watching one of my friends get prayed for. And I, I, it was one of the first time I ever felt jealousy, actually. Mm. Not a jealous person. But they basically said in prayer that no one else in this room is going to last. But he was going to last. And wow. I took that personally. I said, Dang. absolutely not. Like, <laughs> what are we talking about? Yeah, yeah. I'm lasting. Yeah. Um, and I can't remember the, the the specifics of the prayer, but basically it was saying he's made for longevity. Wow. I took that upon my, I, I took it real personal. And yeah. I said, no, I'm made for longevity. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing this. Yeah. And uh, like, I, I, it's a handful of people in that, mm. in that college class that yeah. was like, Yep, we're still locked in. We're yeah. still doing this. I'm still giving God my everything because I want to be, I want to make it to 80. Yes. And I want my great grandkids to say, my faith is deeply impacted by my great grandfather's faith, yes. by the patriarch of this family. Yeah. So that's, that so is, good. that's just real, bro. And yeah. also because your dad is from Africa. Yeah. Eastern civilization, yes. Eastern worldview. Yeah. The, I would say that is more so the thought process of the journey rather than the destination mm. we here in america we're like all right like get healed do it tomorrow yeah, yeah. like god did it right now healing is a journey sanctification mm. is a journey yeah. baptism is a journey mm. in the bible you didn't like get saved and then get baptized in the bible it was you got saved we watched you we your mm. life was proof that you were saved wow. and then when when it was time we decided now we're going to baptize people wow. are you ready wow like it's is this a different mindset? Yeah, baptisms every month. That's actually really cool. That's amazing. But are people like, where are you on this journey of loving God? Right, exactly. Have you developed an inner working of who the Lord really is, so that you can make an outward declaration to say, yeah. "I'm doing this for God." Yeah. Or you just like, ah, I'm redoing this, man. Yeah. Like it's just yeah. So it's 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 super real. That's that's so good. And the same principle is in business of like. There's a great book by Jim Collins, huge Jim Collins fan, called Built to Last. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, I know exactly it's, what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. And it's all of the blue book. And it's all about that of like, are you building to, you know, they study companies that lasted past the recession, lasted past the, um, you know, you know, big economic challenges. And it was like, there's yeah. things and it's not their foundation that was set to last through times. Because like, I know a lot of people, especially people in the marketing world or creative world, they'll, they'll be in splash in the pan, pan for a little bit. And then you don't hear from them again. And it's like, no, like I want to, 
I want to, I want that slow build. Yeah. Either I, way, yeah. if you think about that, like think of an architect. I wanted to be an architect as a kid. I would break down things to know how it worked, mm. so that when it did break, I knew exactly what you to know do. how to fix it. I know how to fix it. Yeah. To be honest, that's us. Mm. We think we know ourselves. We don't actually know the depths of who we are. We don't know mm. what parts of us are broken. Mm. And the only way we know that is by actually getting into the, 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 like getting the instruction from the manufacturer. Yes. Yeah. Like this is, th these are my instructions. Yes. And if I don't actually read this knowing that this is the instruction to who I am, yeah. I'll never understand what parts of me are broken so that actually God can fix it. Yes. And it's very psychological, but like God made that. God yeah. made psychology. God made counseling. God Absolute, made people. Like, yeah. So like those are tools to help you understand the Bible on a deeper level. Like let's just think about it. Paul, uh, not, not, Paul was uh, very, what is the personality? He was very like. Uh, aggressive. Mm -hmm. He was confrontational. He yes. had no problem with confrontation. So much so that he killed people for fun. <laughs> Pe Peter. Peter also was a little confrontational, mm -hmm. but it's just in a different way. Yeah. Actually, you you could almost call Peter like a a version of a Black Panther. Mm -hmm. Like, why did he have a sword? Right. Why was he like he was you? Ready. Why are you cutting people's ears off? Like, where did that come from? <laughs> Because he actually had a zeal within himself to be able to do things like that. Mm. that that's just a part of his personality. Yeah, yeah. We've got to actually understand the personalities of the people yes. that we're reading so we actually can understand ourselves and them better. Yeah. So, but yeah. That's so good. Okay. We got one more question because you got to go to the airport. Yeah. Um, I know. I, and we're going to have you back again. I can't you, wait. You're, you already know that. It's, it's, you I can't as, wait. Because well uh, I'm calendar. here to last, man. Come on now. Um, the, the, the question that I actually had for you and... Because I know there's a lot of people who are creative, not me, that that would define themselves as creatives. Yeah, I had this thought since we put it on the counter that I could not shake that I wanted you to talk about as we close. Of, um, I think many times people who are creative in the creative field, um, which I mean, I can run down. I mean, you you, you help run the social account for Jesus loves you, uh, you know, brand and. I see you do a lot of stuff with Elevation Rhythm and, and a bunch of other different Manny Arango who I love and he's great and, and Alpha and and I I want him on the podcast. Um, but w one of the things that I I've just been struck with is like if I put my identity in what I do, what I create, if anybody critiques it, I'll take it as a personal critique. And I learned that when I worked at an advertising agency. They would poke holes in that thing, and I was like, I put my heart and soul into this, man. Mm -hmm. And they're like, No, 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 like, we're not critiquing you, we're critiquing the work. You have to separate yourself from it. I'm like, How? I am this work. And it's like, I'd love for you to talk about that of like, in creativity, where your identity is. Yeah. Uh, I have like seven different notes on this, and I'm trying to figure out which one to talk about because I think this, what one of them will really help people, and yeah. another one will hinder people. Mm. Um, help me, Holy Spirit. If you think you are your work, you have become a human doing mm. and forgotten that you are a human being. Remember what I said earlier? When Adam was made, the first voice he heard was his father's. Yeah. And then he rested. Yeah. If we don't, if we don't settle that in our spirit to know that we actually rest, like everything we do is made from a position of God is already proud of you yeah. before Jesus did anything. Yeah. Jesus was, when he was baptized, the father, the, the father said, this is my son who I'm well pleased. Yes. Before he did one miracle. Before he did anything. Yeah. There's nothing that you can do to earn the yeah. whatever. There's nothing that you can do that will make a difference really in the context of what it is that you've already made. Yeah. Like I have to make it and decide. Yes. I'm done with this. Yes. I'm not tinkering on it anymore. I'm not going to work on it anymore because now I'm submitting it. And when you submit it, the same, like when you submit a test, I'm not thinking like, oh, like let me change this. You can't. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's up to the it's up to the 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 teacher to to judge the yeah. decisions that you made on yeah. your test and then you have to live with that. Yeah. And it, it's not an indictment on your character. Right. It's really just something that you it's just a part of your work. Yeah. Yeah. And like it, the and you you can take offense uh, because you are your work, mm. but actually your work is um, how do I say this? It's just a part of who you're becoming. Mm. So like, um, for example, I'm a, I was a barista for a season. 
I don't have to be the best barista, but I walked away with this gift and talent now of making coffee. Yeah. Now, do I got to be the best? No, because mm. that's not my call. But like, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? It, yeah. It's it's it, that's another thought that I could really get into another mm. time. But I really want to say we've actually got to submit our work mm. and it's in submit in submitting. We're allowing other people to actually make decisions and judgments on it mm. and have to learn how to say this is no longer. Yeah. Because like. God made us. Yeah. We're not perfect. No. But he knows that we're good. Yeah. And he, everything he made, it was good. Yeah. So um, I don't know if that fully answered it. That's not my whole thought. But yeah. Hey, you might want to catch me. You might want to ask me about exactly. it. Exactly. So. No, no, no. We'll, we'll have you back on to talk more about it. But no, dude, that's so much wisdom. And, and I think hopefully what you caught from this whole conversation is the heart of it, of whatever you're doing, whatever you're building, um, what what you put first matters and in, in, in the well you dig matters. Yeah. Um that's what we're trying to achieve here at this podcast. It's not just, oh, like, here's tips and tricks and this, da da da. You can get that a lot of different places. But like I I want you to last in your forties and fifties and not just have a thriving business or whatever you're doing, but like you deeply love the Lord. Amen. And you haven't lost because you haven't lost your zeal building something for him. So anyways Dude, so Sir. Uh, oh yeah, uh, that that could that could Sir. that could go there. <sighs> Woo! My God, today. Light guy. Hey, thank Love you, brother. I actually really needed this conversation, dude. Man, this is a joy. This yeah. is a blessing. We thank gotta get you, you on that flight, book. bless you guys. We'll see you next week. Thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode of the Faith Hustle Podcast. We hope you got some great value out of it, and that it's going to help you in your journey of learning how to build God's way. If you want to join this tribe, this community that's on that same pursuit, we want to invite you to subscribe to all the audio platforms that you might listen to into this YouTube channel. We're going to be putting out a lot more content just like this to help you to build your business God's way. So until next time, we'll see you soon.